Greetings, brethren, and happy Sabbath to everyone. Happy first day of Unleavened Bread to all the brethren back home in Charlotte and Hickory. Um, today's sermonette is entitled, Becoming a New Lump. Becoming a New Lump, a Shared Responsibility. Christ took the initial step towards our cleanliness. Jesus told his disciples, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, that person, that individual, is the one who will bear fruit. And from apart from Jesus Christ, none of us can do anything. We cannot make ourselves clean, but we do have a pivotal role to play in overcoming sin. Now we all have examined ourselves and we know very well all the areas that we need to struggle and improve in. And we know this because all of us, all of us, when tempted, are drawn away by our own lust. Not each other's, but our own lust. And then when that lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. Have you considered your own role and personal effort in becoming an overcomer? Are you happy with your spiritual efforts towards overcoming and eradicating sin from our lives? Have we really put forth a spiritual effort? What about half an effort or even a quarter of the effort? How does that measure up to Jesus Christ's effort and his determination to live a sinless life and become the perfect and unblemished sacrificial lamb? Do you think it was easy for Jesus Christ to live a perfect life, a sinless life, to be able to control every thought that entered his mind and his actions? You know, I believe that it required great and spiritual effort and dependence upon his Father and our Father in heaven. As Jesus Christ was in agony in the Garden of Gethsemane, I imagine he was close to his breaking point because the Father, he sent an angel from heaven to strengthen and to comfort Jesus Christ, Luke 22 and 43. So it was no cakewalk, brethren. Aren't we glad that it didn't go the other way? Now, whatever your answer is to that question, I think it's one that deserves the honest answer, because the blood that covers and cleanses us from our sins, the blood that redeems us, the blood that flowed from Christ's side as a soldier took his spear and pierced his side was precious blood. If we meditate upon the incredible, gruesome impact that our sins had upon Jesus Christ, then maybe we will be encouraged and even more motivated to use God's spirit for its intended purpose. To help us overcome, to help us be a new lump with Jesus Christ dwelling in us. And unless and until we see the vividly the effect and the tremendous weight of our sins and the mind-blowing suffering that was placed upon Jesus Christ, we will never understand the magnitude of our sins and the need and sense of urgency for that old leaven to be put away and purged. Now, when you begin to look at things from that perspective, you can see for the true Christian, Jesus Christ sacrificed the man that we put forth a full spiritual effort into becoming a new lump. We have to use God's Holy Spirit for what he gave it to us for, to do the will of the Father and help us overcome, working out our own salvation with fear and with trembling. There is so much to consider during this holy festival of God. In 1 Corinthians 5 and 7, Paul gives us the key to what these days are truly about, and it requires a full spiritual effort on our behalf. In 1 Corinthians 5 and 7, it says, Therefore, purge out the old leaven, that you might be a new lump. This is referring to conversion, renewing our mind. Having Christ in us, a new person who, tries, who strives to stop practicing sin, a person who has Jesus Christ living in them, living by the Spirit, putting to death the deeds of the flesh, allowing God to mold them, creating them in his image and according to his likeness. 
since you are truly unleavened. For indeed Christ, our Passover, is crucified, sacrificed for us. This is the reason right here why we need to be growing in grace and in knowledge. This is the reason we have to put forth the time, we have to put forth the energy and the spiritual effort in overcoming sin. Jesus Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven. Don't keep the feast in the same state or the condition that we kept it last year or the year before. We ought to be maturing and using God's spirit to be overcomers, lights for the rest of the world to behold, working out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Not only does sin need to be removed, it has to be replaced, replaced with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Again, overcoming sin in our lives and becoming spiritually unleavened is not solely on Jesus Christ. If it was, there wouldn't be no need for God to send a helper, the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. So we do have a role to play as well, and it's called working out your own salvation with fear and with trembling. We have a responsibility to take action before the lust of the flesh and our carnal desires are manifested. And when that evil thought or that desire pops into our minds, our hearts become angry, and it gets to the point where it's about to bubble over and manifest itself into an action that we might regret. That right there, that's our opportunity with Jesus Christ dwelling in us to use the Spirit of God to replace those thoughts with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth, to replace the old way of thinking with the mind of Christ. For example, if we turn over to the book of Ephesians, Ephesians 4 and 25, it says, Therefore, put in away lying, put away the sin of lying, and let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Here we see that lying needs to be replaced with speaking the truth. Ephesians 4 and 28, let him who stole steal no longer. Again, purge out that old leaven, but then he has to replace this with something, with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. By how? By laboring, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has a need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary and for edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you, with all malice, and let it be replaced with kindness, tenderheartedness, forgiveness, even as God in Christ forgave you. Now this doesn't sound too far-fetched. This is attainable, but Satan would rather we believe that it's impossible. He would rather we believe, as the world does, that Christ did it all and that we don't have to do anything, we don't have to contribute, that we may don't have to put, any forth, put forth any spiritual effort into overcoming sin. But brethren, you and I, we know the truth. We know the real Jesus. We know that with Jesus Christ dwelling in us and ruling in and over our lives, that nothing is impossible because he is the true living bread that came down from heaven. And whoever eats of that bread will live forever. So why is it so important that we put forth a spiritual effort into becoming a new lump? There are many reasons, but I'm just going to give you two real quick. Hebrews 9 and 27. And as it is appointed for men to die once. Notice, brethren, it is only appointed once for men to die. But if we continue to sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins and a certain fearful expectation of judgment. And brethren, the house of God is being judged now. And after the judgment, it comes a sentencing. A sentencing where the awfully low number of one that we just read about previously can change to a number two or the second death. So we must not harden our hearts by continually to fall victim to the desires that tempt us. We must continue to strive and put forth the spiritual effort into overcoming sin, submitting to the authority of Jesus Christ. 
Now, when we repented of our sins prior to baptism, we sent a message out to God. Hosanna, save us please, as Mr. Preston noted this past Sabbath. And that was our cry for help and deliverance from spiritual Egypt. We knew we could not do it on our own. So we were baptized, and God gave us the spirit to help us, giving us the spiritual know-how, the spiritual capability to practice righteousness, to become and use our spiritual efforts, put everything we have into becoming a new lump, and put forth that greater spiritual effort into overcoming the things, the desires, and actions that so easily ensnares us. If we don't even make an effort at all or have a desire to overcome sin, then we're cold as ice. And yet, if we only put half the effort into overcoming, then we become lukewarm. Brethren, let us stay hiding on fire for God. Another reason, as if we even needed another reason, that we need to put forth a spiritual effort in becoming a new lump, is found in Revelation 19. Revelation 19, verse 7. It says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. His wife, the church, has become a new lump because of the indwelling of her husband, Jesus Christ. And she has now worked out her own salvation with fear and with trembling. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright. This is what a new lump looks like, brethren. For that fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints, those who have kept God's commandments, those who have replaced righteousness, sin with righteousness, that they might have right to the tree of life. 19 and 9. Then he said to me, write, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Brethren, the marriage supper of the Lamb is by invitation only. And I don't want to miss out on this invitation. Those who have Jesus Christ living and dwelling in them, the true bread of life, they are the ones who will be at this supper. And these are the true sayings of God. Would you like to be invited? Do you want to be invited? Are you sure your invitation has been sealed? Revelation 22, 15 tells us, Outside, there are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. Those who are on the outside looking in, that's where the old leaven is gathered, which has been separated by Jesus Christ. In conclusion, brethren, I would like for us to turn to one last scripture. That's Revelation 3 and 21. Revelation 3 and 21. To him who overcomes, to him who has Jesus Christ living and dwelling in him and is allowing Jesus Christ to cleanse him from all unrighteousness, becoming spiritually unleavened, to that person I would grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. And as Mr. Walker spoke briefly in his sermon at this past Sabbath, is Jesus Christ's promise enough for all of us? Is it enough to keep you motivated, to keep pressing forward, to keep you enduring to the end? Is it enough to help make you or motivate you to put forth a greater spiritual effort and to working out your own salvation with fear and with trembling, submitting totally to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Now, if that answer is yes, brethren, then let us throughout the days of unleavened bread and beyond, with Jesus Christ living in us, put off concerning our former conduct, that old man which grows corrupt according to deceitful lusts, and let us put on a new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness.